another way to lower SIDS risk is sleep position. I think we spent a lot of time in the Bedtime Basics for Babies program talking about always put baby to sleep on the back. And so the most thing, effective thing that parents or other caregivers can do to keep baby safe during sleep is to place baby on his or her back. And not just for sleep, but, or nighttime sleep, but for every time the baby sleeps. So at nap time, like it says, every sleep time counts. So the whole I issue around back sleeping does not cause vomiting and choking. I, we'd like to demonstrate why that is. First of all, when a baby is in the back sleeping position, the trachea lies on top of the, the esophagus, and I'm going to demonstrate that. Anything regurgitated or refluxed from the esophagus must work against gravity to be aspirated into the trachea. All right, so let's pretend that these two items are the trachea, clear, air, wind, white, and the esophagus, um, yellow, bile, vomit, okay? So you can see the difference in these two. The esophagus connects the throat to the stomach. So the esophagus goes right from the throat right to the stomach. It's an eight inch tube and it lies behind the windpipe and goes all the way down to the stomach, okay? So in a baby, the esophagus goes from the mouth down to the stomach. The trachea, where the air comes through, is about a four inch tube and it lies on top, okay? And the trachea connects to what we call the bronchi. So it, it starts here, it's about a four inch tube, and it goes into the bronchi and then goes to each lung. So bronchi, trachea, esophagus behind it into the stomach. When this baby vomits, that vomit has to work against gravity to jump up and get into the trachea, right? So if the baby's lying on its back and we have esophagus there, trachea there, when the baby throws up, it, ha it, the, it will naturally go on the side because gravity will pull the, the material down to the side, right? However, if you have this baby lying on its belly, now we've got, we still have the trachea behind and um, the, the trachea in front and the esophagus behind, but when the baby is lying there, the vomit can pool right here and the baby can suck it in, right? Much more easily. So there's vomit laying around the baby the, and babies, little tiny babies, sometimes their heads aren't turned completely aside. Sometimes they're, they're like that, right? And so, so when, they, when they go to throw up, it just, it just pools there and they, whereas if they're lying on their back, yeah, and you have the esophagus behind and the mm. trachea in the front, it's got to go uphill to get into that windpipe. So you can see, maybe I should put this up here, you can just see anat anatomically how it, that, it, that this is not necessarily a logical argument. So when a baby is stomach sleeping position, anything regurgitated or refluxed will pull up the opening of the trachea, making it easier for the baby to aspirate or choke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And until you see this actually demonstrated, I think we don't necessarily get it. This way is safe? Mm -hmm. This way is not as safe. Mm -hmm. What about sideline? Sideline is not as safe either. So we're, we're, the, the whole message of the Safe Sleep Campaign is back to yeah. sleep. Yeah. All of the um, stories that you might have heard about sideline or those kinds of pillows that support the baby from the behind, not safe. On the baby's back is what is safe. The risk period for SIDS is really the two to four month period. And then after that it drops. It's still possible, but the risk drops. So by that time, baby is rolling over on their stomach. And so you don't, at, if they're at that point where they're rolling over, you don't need to force them back on their back to sleep. So we talked a lot about the safe sleep baby on the back on a firm surface with no objects, toys, or loose bedding, and no crib bumpers. And I think that so, sometimes kind of hard because Usually when you buy a nice 
things for your baby. Um, it includes the bumpers and the nice fluffy blankets and the nice pretty comforters. But really, baby just needs a sleep sack would be ideal on a f mattress that has a tight-fitting sheet. So um, this really demonstrates what a, a safe sleep environment is. So, you know, bumpers, babies on back, all by himself, and no loose blankets or toys in the crib. One of the things we saw a lot of in the, when I participated on Child Death Review, was the cribs often had a lot of blankets or clothes or other stuff. Order. Yeah, Pillow. or pillows in, in this environment. So obviously baby was in an unsafe sleep environment. If parents are using a blanket, make sure that the baby's feet are towards the, the end of the crib and that the blanket is tucked under the mattress and the crib only comes up to baby's chest like that so the arms are, are loose. And then also to make sure that baby's not overheated that the sleep clothing is um, appropriate for the temperature of the room. Because overheating again is one of the SIDS risk factors. So we want to be able to counter that. Like I mentioned there are often parents or caregivers that can't afford a crib. And so one of the things that we thought was really important to include as part of the Healthy Native Babies Project is identifying other alternative places where babies can sleep that they'll still be safe. And so in a basket, mm -hmm. just a laundry basket <laughs> would be. <laughs> and this is a, a cardboard box or just a little piece of cardboard that has a receiving blanket clipped down so that it's, it's nice and it's firm. And you can put it at the bottom of the laundry basket, also a box or carton, but make sure it's clean <laughs> and hopefully not used with, pesti with fruit or anything that had pesticides on it. A drawer is a great alternative or, or a wash tub. You know, if, if, the, if the idea is to have the baby in a, a, a separate location that's safe on its back, then the next step would be where it's not too cold, you know, or where there isn't a draft. Just helping them try to think through the most logical thing if they are um, a member of a family that can't afford a crib or doesn't have a crib, but can get a $3 laundry basket. But if you do use, or families use, an alternative sleep surface, um, just make sure that baby's in it all by itself. That there's no kids jumping on it or animals crawling into Cats it. Cats with them. Cats or dogs. Yeah. yeah. And then ris the SIDS risk is significantly higher when a baby shares a bed with other children or is placed on a sofa because the sofa is really soft. Um, sleeps in a bed with a mom who smokes cigarettes or sleeps in a bed with an adult who has been drinking alcohol. And then also be aware that the risk fa factor increases if the baby sleeps in a bed with more than one bed share, especially if the, the baby's sharing a bed with two adults. And it's also riskier if the baby is younger than um, 14 weeks of age. But there have been studies that show room sharing, having a separate sleep area for baby in the same room where a parent sleeps, reduces the risk for SIDS and other sleep-related infant deaths. And so because of this evidence, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the AAP, recommends room sharing as the best option. Studies suggest that bed sharing is always riskier than not bed sharing in terms of SIDS and other sleep-related causes of infant death such as accidental suffocation or smothering, and other accidental or unknown causes of injury and death. So room sharing instead of bed sharing. <laughs> I really like this whole approach of risk reduction because we know that telling people don't do this is just not the way to, right. to, right. to teach anything to anybody. And right. so that's why 
we're always so happy to come to communities to be able to share these materials because um, they're really important.